We had a couple of requests for a volume tip of the week part two. So this one's going out to Rebecca and Rachel and Jim and all of you who didn't write in but are nevertheless chomping at the bit to learn more. So here we go. How do I work with my voice so I know what it's going to sound like when I play it back? Or even more importantly, when that potential employer plays it? The unbelievably simple and zen-like answer is practice, practice, practice. Play with the distance between the microphone and your mouth. There is an optimal distance for everyone. For each of you, it will depend on your microphone and the sound level of your normal speaking voice. Once you have found that optimal distance, other things follow suit. For instance, if you know you're going to get louder, try moving back an inch or two. If you're going to whisper, see what it's like moving forward. What happens is that you start to create a little dance in front of your microphone. It's really quite fun. It'll keep you alert and engaged in your copy by doing this. In a recent audition at my agency, I was able to voice a video game character whispering, screaming with anger, laughing, and dying, all by playing with my distance from the mic. The engineer didn't have to change the volume on her end at all. The other less exciting option, for me at least, is to mess around with the volume controls on your recording software. If you know you're coming up to a louder section of copy, say if a game character is angry or dying, you can always pause your recording, adjust the volume, and then continue on. In this manner, you can remain the same distance from the mic and let the software do the work. However, I have found this method more time-consuming and much less rewarding for me as a creative artist. Also, editing with this method is more cumbersome, though in the end quite doable. Stopping and resuming your recording ultimately becomes a head game. It becomes intellectual, and we all know where that leads. You might be surprised, once you find your optimal distance level, how subtle shifts in mic-to-mouth distance allow you to maintain a single dramatic read, even if you're modulating from loud to soft. It's also more fun. Lastly, and this is only for brand newbies, if you just can't figure out how to make your voice loud enough or to stop it from peeking out and causing distortion, there is a normalization tool that comes with your recording software, which boosts the lows and takes the edge off the highs so you can end up with a recording that sounds all of a piece. Basically, everything ends up in the same decibel range. Yes, they will hear your audition now, and if it is the case that you are sending out your first auditions from a home studio, this is a much better alternative than not being heard or blasting out your potential employer's eardrums. Still, I'm not quite sure why they call it normalization, because it doesn't really sound all that normal. A quick side note, normalization is good if you are recording phone interviews with another person and need to level out the differentiation between your voice and theirs. So, let's review, shall we? Normalization. Only if you're a newbie and don't know the ropes quite yet, or if you have a crappy mic. Messing with the volume controls on your recording software. Only if you're as much of an engineer as you are a voice artist and like to fiddle. Creating a fun little dance between you and the mic. Ah, now we're talking. Just keep playing with the distance between the mic and your mouth. For most commercial recordings, you won't hardly need to move at all once you've found your optimal range. For character work, though, and for those pieces of copy with large volume swings, bob and weave, my friends. Bob and weave. Internet. Voice coach.